Welcome to another review, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Arms TX200 Hunter Carbine. And this is quite a special occasion because it's the first time ever that we're going to be looking at a Springer on this channel. In the past, I've only looked at PCPs. Um, I just find PCPs to be a little bit more interesting, to be completely honest with you. But um, I've had a lot of requests to review a Springer. So today is the day. Now this is not just any old Springer, uh, the TX200 is probably one of the best out of the box Springers in the world, if not the best, and if it wasn't for my admiration and respect for this particular gun, you'd probably never see a Springer on this channel. I went to the Air Arms factory last year and I saw this gun being manufactured and I decided right there and then that I wanted to take a closer look at it. So thanks to Air Arms and Air Gun Warehouse, that is what we're doing today. Now the TX200 is really not a complicated rifle, it's very simple, we've got a beautiful uh, wooden stock over here with one of the most unique uh, checkering designs I've ever seen. This rifle's got some beautiful fish scale patterns on the side which is to be honest one of my favourite features of the gun. Uh, the metalwork is beautiful, it's very well blued. We've got underlever cocking in the front over here with an anti bear trap mechanism. And this barrel is a bit shorter. This is the Hunter Carbine version, so the barrel's a bit shorter and it's threaded for a silencer, which I also happen to have here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, HC does stand for Hunter Carbine. This is the 12 foot pound, 22 caliber version, but this rifle is also available with a standard length barrel. And for the purposes of this review, I've fitted an Optizan EVX 3 to 12 by 44i scope. This is the uh, Second focal plane illuminated version of the EVX line of scopes from Optizan and I personally think that this is quite a good uh, fit for, the for this rifle um, both in terms of the magnification range and also the price range. It's a very uh, reasonably priced scope. Now being a spring gun I believe that the cocking mechanism is probably one of the most important points to talk about. And what I really like about this gun is that it's got an underlever cocking mechanism as opposed to a brake barrel cocking mechanism. In other words, the barrel itself is fixed in position the whole time. I firmly believe that barrels should be fixed in place at all times, and it's good to see that Air Arms is thinking the same as me. Uh, the lever is held in place by a spring-loaded bearing, but it breaks and cocks very smoothly and then just snaps right back into place. Now, as it does this, the barrel is exposed so you can load a pellet and what's nice about this gun is that it has that anti-bear trap mechanism so it's impossible to, to get your fingers jammed in this open space over here. Uh, when you're ready to take your shot it's as simple as holding in this little button over here, closing the lever and you're pretty much good to go. The trigger is really really good. Actually probably the best trigger I've ever felt on a spring gun. Um, it's a two-stage trigger, it's very light, which obviously helps with accuracy, just overall a, a top-class trigger. Generally, you'll find that triggers on PCPs tend to be much better because all they're holding back is a small hammer as opposed to a giant piston, but this trigger is pretty much up there with many PCP triggers. The stock on this rifle is made by Manelli in Italy and it's available in either beech or walnut. I've got the, the beech version and it feels really, really good. That beautiful fish scale checkering gives a good grip. Uh, the cheek piece feels really good. Uh, this is quite a heavy rifle and while some people might hate lugging all that weight around, I actually think that it's a good thing, uh, especially on a Springer. Now a lot of people don't think about this, but spring guns need the extra weight to kind of dampen that recoil a bit. Um, that extra inertia that you have on a heavy gun just helps to keep the rifle still and dampen that recoil when your shot is fired and this will help with your accuracy and it will help just keep your, your shot cycle really smooth. I mentioned that the barrel is threaded to fit a TX585 silencer. Um, I have one here. The good news is that it does make the rifle significantly quieter, um, but the bad news is that it also makes the gun much longer, which does kind of suck. You buy the Hunter Carbine version, the whole point of that is to get a nice short rifle, so it kind of takes away from that compact, maneuverable design, um, but I'll leave that decision up to you. 
I don't think I need to say much about performance and accuracy because this gun has proved itself in competitions all around the world. The barrel is made by Lothar Walther, so you know it's going to be good. As far as I know, the TX200 actually won the World Field Target Championships last year in the Springer category, which speaks for itself, but let's take a few shots over the chronograph just to see how consistent this gun is and to see what kind of energy it's pushing out. I'm using the heavier 18.1 grain JSB pellets here just to get an idea of the energy output that we can expect from this rifle. Of course we don't have to worry too much about the shot string because this isn't a PCP but we do want to take note of the shot to shot consistency and from these few shots it's looking pretty good. From these crony results we are getting about 10.8 foot pounds which really isn't much but it should do the job just fine on rats and small birds. Up next some accuracy testing. Right well we have a wonderful winter's day in South Africa, I'm in shorts, t-shirt and slip slops. Uh, we're going to be doing a very, very simple accuracy test today with the TX200, but I'm going to take the opportunity to not just shoot a group, but to actually show you how to shoot with a Springer correctly, because there is a right and wrong way of shooting with a Springer. Um, if this was a PCP, I would be out at 50 meters, I'd be putting the gun down on a bipod, and I'd be shooting off a bench or shooting prone. You can't do that with a Springer, and there's one very simple reason for that. Springers are extremely hold sensitive and that means that you will lose your consistency if you shoot off a bench and then you try and shoot, let's say for example, standing or kneeling. Um, the gun may be accurate, but you're not gonna get the same point of impact, which is a problem. So um, we're gonna be taking a standing group today from um, 20 meters. Uh, it's quite a challenge. There's just a right and wrong way to do it. So um, basically, when you shoot with a Springer, you've gotta let the gun do its own thing. You can't try and hold it tight because you're gonna get inconsistency then with the, the way that the gun recoils. So there's one way that people like to do it, it's called the artillery hold, where you basically just put your hand flat like this, um, kind of where the center of, center of balance is, and when you take the shot, the gun will just recoil freely backwards and forwards like this. Um, I like to put the gun on my fingers like this, and what this allows me to do is to put my elbow on my hip and use that as a resting point. It just makes you a little bit more steady. So. Uh, let's take five shots at the at the target down range and see what we can do. Got um, the 16 grain JSP pellets. I know I did the crony tests with the 18 grain pellets. Um, I just wanted to see how much how many foot pounds the gun was putting out. But to get a slightly flatter trajectory, we're going to be using the 16 grains for this. Let's get to it. There's a bit of wind today, but let's see what we can do. Last shot here. Right, that looks pretty decent. Let's go let's go check it out, shall we? Right, I am very, very happy with that. Um, this hole at the top looked like it was from um, a pellet coming in, but a pellet actually went in here and bounced back and made the small hole at the top. Um, so these are my five shots here either in or around the, the blue area. There was one that went straight through the bullseye. I'm very happy with that. So that's what you can do if you know how to shoot a springer properly. If I try to hold that gun tight, I think my group would spread out a bit, but that's a very, very good group. I'd say that's probably about an inch or so. And as far as standing groups go, you don't get much better than that. So for those of you who, who told me that I'm losing my skill by shooting with PCPs the whole time and not with springers, I hope that you can see that I can actually shoot with a springer when I want to. <laughs> And that pretty much concludes our review of the TX200 Hunter Carbine. Um, I really do like this gun. Just because I haven't used springers on the channel doesn't mean that I don't like springers. I just prefer PCPs, but as far as springers go, you're not going to get a gun better than this, to be honest. Um, so if springers are your passion, I've put links down below to different places where you can, you can buy this rifle. And um, hopefully I'm going to get a chance to actually do a hunting video with this sometime. I'm really pressed in my schedule for the next few months, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to slot this in, but hopefully I can. Stay subscribed so you can uh, be notified of, of future uploads, and hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.